What's up, y'all? This is Henny. And yes, uh, I finally got a chance to look at the brand new released Adobe Premiere Rush. In its relationship to LumaFusion, and would I ever be able to switch? <laughs> I don't know, we're gonna check it out right now. You follow me! <laughs> if you've seen my previous video, one of those where I, you know, first got introduced to Rush. You know, I gave my skepticism on, you know, what it would be like using Adobe Rush versus LumaFusion. And a lot of people, you know, had their feelings of how that might work or how that might not work. But uh, now that it's here, I was not able to get the beta version. But now that it's here, I'm able to download that. We are going to see, I'm going to screen record as we try to figure out just how far we can go using Adobe Rush instead of LumaFusion. <laughs> Let's go! The business, the business. So, okay, let's be honest. I did try this on my phone already this morning. And um, I was quite frustrated on... <laughs> The abilities of what it could and couldn't do. So uh, it's already telling me it has an update and it's also telling me that the four files that I uploaded to their storage that I did not ask for it to upload, but it already uploaded in the background, not sure why that happens, is, is telling me that my cloud storage is already full. So I will not be able to upload any more files unless I upgrade to their subscription plan. So I'm gonna cancel the update. I'm gonna start a new session. Create new project. Let's just add media. Okay. So it comes up, it has your camera roll, your moments, your videos, your photos, your albums, your audio. Okay, I'm not sure where audio is coming from. Okay, I'll allow that. You can also import from your cloud, uh, from Dropbox or from the Creative Cloud, which I already did. Let's see if I go to Adobe Assets, uh, this must be the one that I was working on this morning. These four files. I'm going to say create. It's going to get them from the cloud. So as far as using files from other cameras, um, if, they, if the files from other cameras cannot be um, seen within the camera roll, you're most likely not going to be able to import into Adobe Rush. So the frustrations that I just talked about in iOS 12 is not going to work here with Adobe Rush because you can't use, uh, seems like the files app or any other app to besides putting your files into Dropbox and then re-uploading them to uh, Adobe Rush. Yeah, that's one thing that I don't know, I can't, I can't work with. But say for instance, I have this file, I have another file, I have this file, um, three files I'll just try out. I'm gonna add these files to the timeline. It's gonna prepare the media and we'll see what happens. Since the first file was in um, vertical mode uh, because I was doing it for Instagram, it's already switched the orientation to vertical. But I see here there is a way to switch it from square, landscape, or portrait. So let me just try to go to landscape. One of the things that I did notice that if you're using, um, say for instance, you know, a 4K file, and then you also have a 1080 file on uh, Adobe Rush, it automatically kind of scrunches it down to fit the size of what it is versus LumaFusion where all the files look the exact same size regardless it's already scaled up which I automatically love because most of the times if you're using a 4k like say for instance you're a 4k timeline you're already going to have to enlarge each 1080 file or 2k file to fit that 4k timeline and one thing about LumaFusion it already does that so now let's say for instance I have this file and let's say I want to enlarge it. So I'm going to go to, I double tapped it. Um, okay, so if I go up and I say, all right, I can scale it all the way up to fit the 4K timeline. So let's look at this layout, right? Let's talk about the layout. One of the cool things on the iPad version versus the iPhone version is it's easier to see your cut copy and delete um, functions, which are like 
tabbed over on your iPhone uh, versus like being one of the first three things that you can see for editing because most of the things you're going to do is cut, delete, uh, duplicate, those types of things. So I would like to see Adobe put at least those few functions first or have the availability to show you what comes first and what doesn't. Now, as far as uh, the layout and the way it looks, you know, Adobe products are always going to look well polished. You know, the typography is going to look good. The gradients and the way they have the app laid out, it's going to look pretty good. Um, it's it's Adobe. They've been doing apps for a long time. Um, so, you know, I like the fact that um, you don't have to go to a different window for specific functions on your iPad. So, you know, if LumaFusion was to update so that if you double tapped on, say for instance, a video, it would just pull over a tab so that you can still stay in the edit window, that would be kind of nice. But let's go on to other things that are quite frustrating with Rush. Automatically, I've seen that you can't import LUTs it says you can import your own presets, but I guess it has to be your own presets from Adobe Cloud, which I do not have. So all it has is these built-in presets, and they're pretty stock, similar to what you would get on LumaFusion. SL, Mono, Fuji, Breach, and you can take the intensity up and down. So that's cool. Um, say, for instance, you just want to change the basic colors. They have that. Let me tap on this. You can create your own presets. That's cool, but you can't import LUTs um, directly from the app unless it looks like you're on the cloud. If I'm wrong, please let me know if I'm wrong. But from first take, I'm not able to do that. Uh, that's very frustrating because I like to color my videos a specific way. And I like to use log footage so that I can take LUTs that I've created over time to be able to import uh, into the app to use this thing professionally. The second thing for me is kind of like using slow motion, right? So I'm looking and if I go to, uh, say for instance, transform. From what I can tell, there's no speed. So like if you have a slow motion video, where's the way to speed or slow down a clip? There's no way for you to do that. I don't know, it's just another thing that makes it not as professional. And I get that Adobe is saying, hey, this is Premiere Rush. This is a way for you to compile some clips to be able to get an idea of where you're going and then you can uh, have this uploaded to the cloud and then download it on a, you know, any type of laptop to be able to really edit the video the way you want. My issue is, is there's so much power in these devices now. Man, I'm able to take 4K 60 files that are 10 bit and even when it tells me that it might not play at 100%, it's still playing, It's I'm still able to add LUTs. And the overall render time is insane. Like it's sometimes in real time, if I'm doing a five minute video, it's rendering out with color grades, sound effects, all of that in real time. So it's been way faster than my, than my MacBook Pros. So I'm gonna see if I can actually take a 10 bit 4K 60 file from my X-T3, download it to Dropbox and see if I can upload it using uh, Adobe Rush's Dropbox functionality. See if that works. I have the file that is downloaded from my files into Dropbox and I'm going to try to upload it into Adobe Rush just to see how it works with the bigger files. Let's see media, Dropbox, open, allow. All right, let's see. Preparing media. It's going to download, I believe, into uh, Adobe Rush. Let's see how this works out. Okay. So I downloaded the file and it put it directly on the timeline. Um, didn't, can I move this around? Yes. Okay. Let me try to put this in the front. Now this is the same file that I used on my iOS 12 video that I took. That was the XT3 file. Um, that was 4k 60, uh, 10 bit, uh, H265 file. So I was trying to see if uh, W rush would even play it back. Um, and this is what I get. So I place the audio, but as you can see, the screen's completely greened out or fuzzed out or whatever. It's definitely not playing at all. So from that standpoint, it's, it's not available to play those files either. So yeah, there's a lot of things that it's not able to do that I would need it to do for me to even consider trying to use this app 
for video editing. And then it comes to the elephant in the room, which is the price. Um, say for instance, I wanted to export this video. Whatever this little sequence is right now, if I want to share, it's going to give you three exports with the free starter plan. Upgrade for unlimited sharing. And so, okay, um, let me see what upgrade's hitting for. Upgrade for unlimited sharing and 100 gigabytes of storage for $9.99 a month. $9.99 a month for uh, this app to be able to give you unlimited sharing and 100 gigabytes of storage versus LumaFusion's $19.99 one-time purchase. And then on top of that, say for instance, you put $9.99 a month into your iCloud storage, that would give you two terabytes of storage for uh, the same type of situation. And they're able to do so much more and it'll have you thinking like, why the hell would I even think about trying to use Adobe Rush for video editing on the go. Quality settings. Let me see what frame rates or what quality I can actually export in. And the highest it will go is 1080p. So you can't even upload 4K files to say for instance, YouTube, like I like to do. I mean, and not everybody is going to, you know, want this type of high quality or have the type of bandwidth, even from like, you know, your internet to be able to upload like this. But YouTube does give you the availability to upload in 4K. Yeah, this will only max out at 1080, 30 frames a second. So there's another strike. I mean, strike after strike right now. Uh, I'm not trying to hate, I'm just trying to tell you in 2018, uh, versus other apps like LumaFusion, man, uh, you're just not getting much for your value. So, or much for your, you know, the, what they want you to pay. And so that's all I can say right now. I mean, I don't think I'll ever use this app um, until they try to come with a lot more than just uh, a little bit beyond something like iMovie. It's it's sad to see something like this happen to where, you know, you have such great hardware and, you know, uh, the availability to really capture in a lot of the new people who are trying to do so much on the go with a mobile device like an iPad to be able to have a product like this that is so limiting out the gate. And so that's my first impressions of the Adobe Rush and uh, I am in no rush to use this app. Sorry, but uh, no, nope, not gonna be able to do it. Not gonna be able to do it. And I'm out! Ha <laughs> ha!